Welcome back to another episode of Murph and Marta Show. In this next song, you must march around the room. Here we go. Hey, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Just sit down in the chair. Yeah. We've uh, stepped up our game a little bit. It feels a little bit awkward. I feel like I don't like having something in my face in my face, but if it's going to help people listening, be honest, we've got some rogue microphones. How, how would we describe this to the, uh, the people that are listening, not people that are watching? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, I just said. We are, we've got, we've got uh, a game limiter. We've got, what's that called? A uh, focus right. Like, we got a microphone that goes into a thing and that goes into our computer now. We're, so, pretty much, we look definitely more professional. We're, we've upped our ante to the semi-professional level. I, I just can't stop looking at your game. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy. <laughs> who, who was one of your clients saying that I didn't know it was the Murph and Mai Tai show. It just sounds like the Mai Tai show. I know. Was it Chids? Could have been Chids. I, fe- I didn't feel bad. Look at this though. Look at Guess these. Guess what, Chids? You can hear me. Look at these numbers. Look at these numbers. Look at this. Wow, you're, I've, I've got you're on top. I've got weight. Your game is massive. This is fantastic. You've got a good game. <laughs> now, um, we're back. I just want to bring up something. I'm sorry. For hurting you in the gym. <laughs> I, want to put that, I want to put that out there. So we just have a little bit of a chat. Is a uh, nerve's not gonna like this, he's not comfortable with emotions. Yeah. Um, but I have said some things recently in the gym that you didn't like, and I appreciate you actually saying something to me and addressing them to me. I figured that was the thing. I can either bitch about it behind your back and complain and just feel bad about everything, or you know what? Not, not call you out, but have a chat with you, be a professional, mm-hmm. be a. Uh, a friend, a friend. <laughs> I think. work it out and move on and that's that's where we are yeah so I, I would say you know, we've, we've been on this uh, journey for a little bit me and you have personally yes um, but we've also lately been more inclined to be aware of what other people are doing yes right? and uh, how other people are feeling with what uh, you know things happening on the gym and, and our personal lives and whatnot. and so I'd be a bit of a hypocrite to be like I don't want you to talk to me about how you're feeling and then fucking go out and do shit. You know what I mean? So yep. I just want yep. to say, I like how you're feeling uncomfortable right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to focus on the little life. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you bringing it up and uh, we're now back. We're going to do some more shit and talk some shit. Let's talk some shit. Then. Let's talk some shit. So thank you for that. Now, anyway, today about ACL injuries. Have we done the introduction? I went like this Blah! before. You know, I said, Murph, Murph, Martha show? Yeah, done. And we game it up and we oh, discussed it. Distracted by it. It's so, it's, there's a flashing lights and shit, it's affecting me. We'll, but we'll get used to this. I still also feel like I'm distanced from you, but that's a point, that's okay. But now we're not playing kneesies, which is a good thing. I enjoy the kneesies every week. <laughs> I look forward to it. And also, the camera's a bit further back as well. Things are changing. Let's, let's move on. Things are changing. All right, anyway, um, this morning, this morning, over the last two weeks, some things have happened in regards to players and injuries. Right. For me personally, yep. for players and injuries, you know, last week, um, one of my players, uh, the captain of the West Adelaide team, Beck Owen, uh, had a fibula snapped when she was playing the semi-final for West East, which was absolutely fucking devastating. Yes. Uh, I was at a soccer game and I got the news and my mates were like, you're right, and I just said, nah, leave me alone. Yeah, uh, that sucks. Sorry, so, babe. Sorry, babe. Shout out to Beck for that one. Uh, grand final tomorrow, so we we're supporting the girls there. And then this morning, I was actually uh, sent another text message from another girl who was injured on the weekend, same weekend. Um, and she said basically that she had an MRI done, and it's almost confirmed. You know, not quite confirmed yet from the doc, but that she's had an ACL injury. Now, I'm not sure whether it is uh, torn or fully ruptured. All right, so just a tear or, or a full rupture. Um, but I had a big chat with her just before I got here uh, about you know prognosis and ideas and what we're doing and how things are going to be looking moving forward and the ideas around ASO injury. Now, the reason I said it like that is because what we discussed just previously. I'm just adjusting my mic. Right? Um, what we discussed previously is like when you hear ACL injury, right? People tend to go, "Oh fuck!" Yeah. Like it's the end of the world. You know, especially for female athletes when it's such a prevalent um, thought in their minds. Everything they're doing is to prevent ACL injuries. It seems like everything that's put out there is to, you know, protect you from ACLs and then what happens like you're gone. Pretty much everyone's an ACL expert now. Yeah. Because it's such a, I mean, you said specifically of particular females, but 
I don't know, I reckon particularly anyone, like any athlete, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's, especially in a real dynamic power-based sport like football, mm -hmm. soccer, basketball, um, rugby, if you can name heap of them, where you need to change direction. Everyone's saying, you know, make sure you do these things. Mm -hmm. Don't don't make yourself have that ACL injury. Mm -hmm. Make sure make sure you protect yourself, protect the knee, blah blah blah. blah. And all it is, as you said, it is that fear mongering of it's I'm, in your I haven't head. I've said that on the on the oh, record yet, but I'm gonna start in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep going. Uh, well, as you're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, it, is, it is, I'm going to, I'm going to burst your bubble. Burst it is, it is fear mongering. That, that's essentially uh -huh. what's happening is, um, damn, I feel bad now. <laughs> um, is everyone's just making the athlete fearful of this ACL injury mm -hmm. when really, I mean, if you've got to look at the statistics, not, I mean, obviously not everyone's going to get one. Correct. The amount of athletes that do is probably a pretty small percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're obviously going to go into the female aspect of side of things as well mm -hmm. and that's where I'm sure you're saying what you said before about uh, particularly females because of the so the so-called Q angles and all that sort of stuff um, where we're gonna burst that bubble big time that's the plan that's the plan that's the plan um, we're gonna get into that but <laughs> sorry you, I'll let you take over a little bit no 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 so, so uh, what we discussed um, as a, an idea before the show was what we wanted to talk about was this, this, these injuries have come up um, and what it seems like is that it has gone from being having an awareness of a potential injury being able to occur through whatever mechanism it's occurring through whatever sport you're playing it's it feels like it's gone from being an awareness to now a fearfulness right where the idea out there of oh my god you're getting an ACL injury you're done for you get an ACL you 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 um, You've done ACL, oh shit, how, like, oh my god, like, it's the worst thing ever, you know, how are you going to survive as a human? Yeah, see you in 12 months. All right, at the end of the fucking day, it's a ligament that's like two centimeters long, you know what I mean? And if that, um, and... It's not like there's, that, that's the only ligament in the knee either. Correct. There's, what, three other big ones. Three big ones. Wait, one big one, two other ones that are uh -huh. pretty supportive of the knee. Correct. Plus a shit ton of muscle and Correct. tendons. Correct. A lot of other stuff going on there. And the knee's only one joint in about what twenty-seven joints that control the the lower leg, yep. right? You know what I mean. So when I'm talking joints, talking like metatarsals as well. Um, you know what I mean. So it's it's gone from being okay, have this awareness, to now let's be fearful of this injury occurring. And so what happens no matter what programs you're doing, if you if your psychology is based around fear then when you go and do any training programs, you're still gonna have that subconscious level of fear that I'm doing this program to help me be better and help minimize my risk of having this injury occur. But subconsciously, you're still fearful of the injury occurring, depending on how it's being pushed across to you. you know? And so this, this came to me when I was having this conversation. I've had this conversation, unfortunately, many times. And in this conversation today, it was more so I was around, um, I was, I was around framing the idea, reframing the idea of what this ACL injury actually is to this, this client of mine, this client of mine. And, you know, she's saying, oh, well, you know, you know, that means I'm out for this long and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I said, well, look, at the end of the day, no, it doesn't mean that because conservative management is coming through. So um, more around actually training the body to work without ACL is showing some really positive benefits. You know, you're not going to have the long-term effects of surgery. You're not gonna have the potential long-term issues within the knee itself. You're not gonna have um, nine to 12 months of rehabilitation ahead of you. You're not gonna have like this whole other level of things that come from actually intrusively um, breaking apart the body and, and rebuilding it. You know, there's there's a whole nother level of things that can occur. You can let the body heal itself, right? Number one, not that the ACL, the, the ligaments heal themselves, but you're actually, what you're doing is you're rebuilding the structures around the ligament to enable the body to then move properly again. You know, she's like, oh, well, how's it gonna mean for this, this, and this? And I said, exactly what you said. You know what I mean? You've got other ligaments, you've got a lot of other muscle around there, and all it means is that we just gotta work on this, this, and this to ensure that you can get back and play. You know, here are some examples of people I've worked with and I'm currently working with who are playing with an ACL. Here are some examples of people who have done that I haven't worked with and what they've gone through. Here's how we need to adapt the plan to do that, right? So we're looking at outcome-driven um, and, and outcome-driven focus 
rather than trying to put this this fear in you about what this means to you from what you've heard from everybody else in the world. You know what I mean? And what this means to you from every other program. Oh, you know, coaches coming out. Girls, go do your, your FIFA 11 because it's, you're going to protect yourself from ACL. So it's the worst thing ever. Actually, hang on a second. They can still happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that's the thing is like, I feel we need to say to people, hey, calm down a second. All right? It, it's not a fun injury. No. No injuries are fun. No. All right? It's not a, um, it's not a short-term injury. But significant injuries aren't generally, you know. The thing is, there's actual outcomes that you can get from that, you know, and you can actually come back and play. You can actually do other things, um, you know, you, sorry, you can do the same things to a, in a different way, but you can still come back, yep. you know, and you can still enjoy your life. You know, you haven't lost a leg, you haven't lost an arm, you know what I mean? There's, there, no... there's many worse injuries than an ACL. Correct. Yep. And we need, to, we need to put that in perspective now for people and say, hang on a second, look, you know, it's not going to affect you significantly long term if you do the rehab protocols and if you go through the training protocols and if you understand what is required of you, you can be fine. Would you think that, so obviously there's a lot of preventative exercises for ACL, ACL yeah. prevention. Um, would that be the same exercises you would give someone who's just done their ACL? What do you mean? So obviously to prevent ACL issues or to help prevent minimize them, the risk, minimize the risk of, yep. um, focus on plenty of hamstring strength, mm -hmm. um, work on all those eccentric factors to be able to slow down the shift of the knee, mm -hmm. uh, to be as I say, are they the sort of things you would then focus on again once? So let's say, tell that, great, fantastic. And then unfortunately oh, shit, happens. ACLs happen, uh -huh. continue on the same path or will there be a change in exercise now? Would you do something different there, to further, can, can you further stabilize the knee or is it just more the same thing hoping that that's going to fix the job what what would you do with this client now mm -hmm. uh, to get it back on the field without going through the surgical intervention great question Thank you. i feel very professional with this it's kind of cool this is kind of cool isn't it like fantastic question adam i'm just about to answer now um, <laughs> i think it's 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 the same things but uh modified you know what i mean so depending on what has occurred within the injury mechanism itself. You know, is like there, how, how, it, how, how the injury yeah. occurred, number one, is there other damage, is there yeah. muscle damage, is there other ligament damage, you know, what the actual, um, the injury is itself. Let's just say it was like my one, and it was just a straight ACL rupture. Nothing else, no other damage. Awesome, we continue as we were. Yep. Right, we continue, once the swelling goes down and whatnot, we continue as we were, you need to learn to hop, you need to learn to decelerate, you need to learn to land and change direction. Was, Scott, I don't know fully the this, this full story of yours, was yours uh, external? Oh, let me tell you about mine. Let me, let me paint you a little story. I was, uh, it was the, towards the end of the game, we were, I think we were oh, one story time. I'm, I'm ready for it. I've got the professional microphone as well. Ready to tell the story. Um, end of the game, we were one all, all right? And I'm playing up front, so I'm a striker. Now, the ball's been kicked out by the goalkeeper to their left back, all right? And so I'm running in um, to try and get him into the middle, so try and shove him in towards the middle where our, we had like midfielders in there to stop him to get the ball back and hopefully we can go and score. Now, he's run past me, I'm chasing him. Now, in my head, I know that we want to shove him to the middle, so our winger, our right winger, because I'm obviously facing this way, our right winger's gonna come up and he's gonna have to go towards the middle. But what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and cut him off. So if he comes in here, right, our right wing comes up, this guy's running towards him, he goes, okay, shit, this guy's coming at me, I've gotta to go towards the middle. As he goes towards the middle, I'm there to get the ball. All right, now, that's what happened in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Expectation. <laughs> Reality. Yeah. Reality was, I'm running after this guy, he's gone towards the middle, as our right wing has come up, I've gone awesome. I'm gonna like short step it and get to him first, all right, so I'm not, <laughs> actually going to complete my run and change direction i'm just going to half step which means i'm going to hyper extend my leg and try and use a stiff leg to try and push myself to the right and what's happened is that as i'm running at full speed i've planted my foot and like i said didn't change direction properly hyper extend everything so my, my entire left leg went straight at full speed and my femur so my thigh translated over the top of my tibia all right, snap the ACL, push back into place. 
no other damage. All right, I've gone down. Guy got past me, went around. Um, I had literally no voice this time. It was a period of about three games, I had no voice. And what, like, literally no voice. And the sideline were about 35 meters away, and they heard me screaming, and I went down. Um, and so I don't know how that came out. Um, and then anyway, so they hobbled off, and basically what happened was, yeah, as, as it's translated over, uh, there was, the reason we could tell it translated to it, there was bone bruising on the bones. So back of the, the um, back of the femur and, and the front of the tibia. Uh, and that's what caused it to like shift and snap. And it literally just went, snap, back in place. Yeah. Everything yeah. medial actually in place, no dramas, you know. Um, and I used my story of rehab um, with this lad this morning. And said, hey, cool, you know, understand that. Cause she was like, oh, I can't do this, can't this do that. external or internal? Hers was a rotation. So we don't, haven't like, got the scans back yet. We haven't got the scans back yet. So um, she was changing direction, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, internal. Um, so she was changing direction and she felt it, you know, go or whatever, swelling afterwards, you know, no, like swelling at the moment, no real pain. Um, she said, I went for a bit of a jog last night and I was like, you know, maybe it's in my head. You know, that's what she was said to it. You know, maybe it was in my head and it's fine and we've got the scans and da, 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 whatever. You know, whatever this guy said, you know, we'll confirm this afternoon. So. Um, and I was trying to say to her, I said, look, when I did mine, you can use it as an opportunity to grow or you can use it as an opportunity to um, wallow in your sadness, basically. Wallow is me, this is the shit, you know? And I said, um, if, you, if you feed into the fear mongering and you feed into the um, perception that's the worst thing in the world that can happen to you, you're gonna go down one certain path. <clears throat> yeah. I said, like, I'm N equals one. Right, I'm just one person doing my thing, right? But I'm not the only one doing it. I'm the only one that can give you this idea. And I said to her, you know, when I did mine, in the year that I took off, so I did my, I had the injury in on April, April 24th, I think it was. And then I didn't get surgery until the following March. And I was like, number one, I didn't really give a shit about having the surgery. Number two, I was like, I wanna see what I can do in that time, how much strength I can get, you know? And in that time, I basically hit PBs on deadlifts and squats and running and all this kind of bullshit. You know, I, she was like, did you play before you had surgery? I said, yeah, I played. You know, not at the extremely high level because I still wasn't certain of how it would react at that time. When I was strong, right? And when I'm jumping and landing and changing direction, I'm fine, I could have played. Yeah. But I did it because in my head, I was like, what's that fear? Like, what's what's going to happen? You know, and I think I was, I was trying to explain that to her and saying about, you know, there, it's not the end of the world. You yep. can do stuff. And she said, okay, so, so what would we do? Like when you start, you know, what would we do now? You know, if she goes, um, let's say it comes back this afternoon and this has happened to me, you know, it's ACL injury of uh, when can I come back in and start training and doing stuff again? Like, you know, like a month or two, I said tomorrow, like we come in tomorrow. If there's no pain, we can work on it. You know, we work through you and around your pain ranges. And if there's information, obviously we'll get that down. I said, but we can still do stuff. You know, the benefit being you've still got strength and ability and neuromuscular control. You know how to do things now. If there's no pain, we can work around it, see where you get to. You know, it's not necessarily like, you know, you've got to go have surgery now, you've got to wait until then and then go have surgery and then come back because that's time. You know, the stronger you can get, and this is with conservative management, is that the stronger you can get before surgery, if you, that's the path you wish to go down, the better your outcomes are going to be after surgery. The quicker the recovery will be too. And the quicker yeah. the recovery is, you know. And so I'm like, well, you know, that's a pathway you can go down if you choose to do that. You know, I remember Yana from years ago. Yana, when, you know, when Yana did, um, she did the trifecta. So it was like medial, uh, sorry, it was ACL, medial and lateral meniscus or something. Medial meniscus and lateral ligament. Anyway, she did um, three of them. And she was like, I don't know if I want to get surgery or not. Can we work with this? Yana was um, one of my old clients who was like, very much into the science behind, behind things. You know, she was a scientist and she was like, you know, I'm reading some of this stuff coming out conservative management, she was the first person I worked on conservatively. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to a point where she went back to her surgeon a year afterwards. So we do a lot of work whenever together. She went to her surgeon a year afterwards and he was like, which one's the damaged one? We couldn't tell, you know, all the testing, you know, but there was a focused effort on that. And the, and the way you go about things has to be very considered, right? But it's not that, oh my God, this is the end of the world now. Yeah. And that's, I think, the, the, from the awareness, the fearfulness, we need to bring it back from that and say, cool, have an awareness of that, but also be aware that you can pull your hamstrings. All right? Also be aware that you can get concussions. Also be aware that you, know, you can have soft shoulder injuries. You know, so be aware that you need to be robust from the, from the toe to the head. Yeah. Right? Not yeah. just prepare yourself for one particular 
um, movement or action or outcome. Because essentially, if you're not, if you're only focusing on the ACL, you're probably going to do an ACL anyway because you've lost focus on everything else. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Your ACL is strong as fuck. But, yeah. You know, everything else is bugging. So. Yeah. You know, and so I think that that was the biggest thing that will come through. And I know you've had experience with people where the mindset around not wanting to get an injury, how that affects them, you know, and, and what their outcomes actually are. Or well, not wanting to get the injury, having an injury, uh, recovering from the injury. Obviously, my time with the Sixers, there was a lot of that going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and like these injuries would be minor, like a little <laughs> ankle roll, yeah. which every player does every season. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they would start to freak out by this sort of thing. And the, then there's the bigger ones. Um, actually, one of the, going on what you're saying here, mm-hmm. about this whole thing of the psychology of injuries and the fear-mongering side of things. Uh, remember Bajan Johnson? Of course, I remember BJ. BJ. Um, <laughs> he did his ACL. Yeah, this, this was an external force injury. Uh, landed on, went up for a rebound, landed on someone's foot, mm-hmm. rolled off. Did his ACL. No. Um, straight away, I'm not stopping playing. No, yep. fuck, I'm, I'm going to keep playing. And he kept playing. Uh, he did get the uh, did get the surgery, probably because six has paid for it, so he didn't want to pay for it himself. So yeah, Fair I got the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if someone offered me free lip fillers, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. I might actually put you up to that. Let's do this. Um, so he got the surgery done, and straight away he's like, I'm not waiting 12 months. There's, mm-hmm. there's no way I'm going to wait 12 months for him on the court. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure was in and maybe with, easily within within two months, mm-hmm. he's back out training, not quite competition level, but back out training. Within six months, he was on court playing games yeah. at full maximum capacity. Yeah. Only because he refused to listen to the whole fear thing or the whole, um, we used a term before, like a, no, it was something else we were talking about mm. earlier, but you know, expectations. Yes, yeah, the yeah, expectation yeah. of yep. it's going to be 12 months. He's like, no, fuck that. I'm going to do it in three. Yeah, it did take him six before he's back competing, but that's yeah. still half the typical expected time of 12. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just his that's that's typical BJ, just stubborn asshole, but it works, correct? It works, correct. Um, and then there's the other side of injuries where I'm not going to mention names, but where they're like, oh, it's an ankle, oh, I want to sit. Yeah, yeah, it's only an ankle. Uh, yeah. There's a big argument going on in the NBA currently with uh, LeBron James doing his ankle early in the season, took 18, 18 games off. Mm-hmm. It's an ankle. He is almost 40. <laughs> He's almost 40. He's no Michael Jordan. Yeah, for he, that. <laughs> um, Anthony Davis at the moment, there's a couple of other things going on, but yeah, it's everyone's so scared of injuries being the end of their career. Mm-hmm. They're just, any injury, it's not, I don't want to, I want to sit, I want to make sure I'm 100%. You're not going to be 100%. Mm-hmm. It's, if you're a professional, especially if you're a professional, uh, even if semi-professional, and you're, you're playing regularly, even if you're just an athlete. Anyone. Anyone. You're never going to be 100% once you've got your first injury. Yeah. Because there's more than likely going to be another one. And not going to be big, they're going to be pretty small, niggling sort of things. But you can push through these sort of things. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You said it. One of my favorite quotes uh, is, "You're not going to. You shouldn't go into the grave perfect." I reckon that was Yoda. <laughs> it's got to be. It like <laughs> the words would be jumbled up a little bit more, but <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go to a grave. Though. He just disintegrated. <laughs> um, you're not. Yeah, you're not supposed to go in a grave perfect. Yeah. You're meant to be all fucked up. You're meant to have bursitis and. Um, no more cartilage in your within knees. reason. Within reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but everyone's just so scared because of what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. The fear mongering side of things, where if you're in, you have an injury, you're finished, mm-hmm. you're done. Whether it might be months or careers, people talk about even. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole psychology of injuries is is a huge. Thing. I think the next the next thing then as part of this is how do we help negate or minimize the fear mongering that is occurring for athletes from those around them. How do you minimize that, that, that fear of doing this? Because obviously what, what's happening is like, they're getting information from elsewhere, right? Now, if you talk to myself or you talk to you or you talk to some you know, physios or, or doctors in the know, right? And have an understanding of this thing. And 
I said this thing, you know, um, psychology, right? And understanding of, of how the body responds to external um, psychological stimuli and emotional stimuli, right? How do we then minimize the effect on players and on people that says to them, hey, you should be fearful of this instead of being, okay, you should be aware of this mm -hmm. uh, as part of what you're doing. You know, this is something that you need to be aware of and we put systems in place to best mitigate the risk of it occurring rather than you should be fearful of this occurring because in actuality, if you're fearful of something occurring, right? Let's say in a game, right? In subconsciously, you're fearful of doing ACL, pulling your hamstring, whatever, right? You don't play as fluid and efficient as you normally would because there's something holding you back there. Now, not playing as fluid and efficient means that your movement patterns are actually different to what they would normally be. They're dysfunctional. Leading and to. Leading into injury because you're dysfunctional in your movement. And that's the very essence of what you try and do when you put um, programs or to try and mitigate and minimize that risk is you're actually trying to ensure that movement patterns are functional, right? And so you basically, that's what we we're saying before about feeding into the dysfunction, feeding into the fear, encourages you to feed into the dysfunction subconsciously. Yeah. And then you end up at more risk of doing it. You know, so how do we then, you know, put out there more and how do we then give strategies to those listening and to those watching? Here are some things you can think about and here are some things and here are some ways to um, understand what's fear mongering and what's awareness. Um, what's the, there's another quote, another quote. Uh, energy goes where focus flows. Ooh. So, like, motorbike riding, bike riding, mm -hmm. you got to look at where you want to go, don't look at the car coming towards you, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, exactly what you're just talking about there, you know, if you're going out onto the field and you're thinking about not getting an ACL injury, mm -hmm. the chances are you're changing something in your mechanics to avoid that, which then changes the mechanics, mm -hmm. which is going to increase the chance of getting that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think our job to um, change that that strategy, the mindset strategy, the psychology of it is we can mention, look, we're going to put things into place in your programs mm -hmm. that are going to minimize that risk. Your focus needs to be on sport. Mm -hmm. Your focus needs to be on playing sport. Let me take care of the, the um, prevention side of things mm -hmm. because we can worry about that because we're not out in the field running mm -hmm. around on a court running around. Let me worry about that. You focus on the game. You focus on getting better at the game. Mm -hmm. it's, it, I think why not take it a step further, extrapolate out further, right? It's easy enough saying that to people. Yes. Right? But when they're affected by other factors, when their friends and their family and their teammates yes. and their coaches and media and you know everything else in, the, in their circles that I hadn't mentioned in those, in those numbers there, um, are telling them that it's the worst thing ever and are, and are feeding into that. How can we then put something out to say, actually, or how can we then help them, give them strategies to, to negate that and to minimize that? I guess the biggest thing is uh, don't, um, oh, what's the, no, I've got another quote. We will need to educate them. <laughs> I'm not gonna go over more quotes, it just seems corny now. <laughs> we, need, we need to educate them so yep. they, they have a better understanding of what we know. Mm -hmm. Um, and they don't need to go into full lectures and anything like that, but understand mm -hmm. that, like we're talking about already, this is not the be all and end all. Having an injury is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. These things we put in place are for these reasons. Mm -hmm. um, we want you to focus on the movement side of things and all that sort of stuff. Uh, where's your head going? I can see that your head's somewhere else. Yeah, no, no, my head's not somewhere else. No, no my head is, um, my head is in, in the fact that, you know, people like us, yeah. <clears throat> right, who know what we know, do what we do, sell it in a way to make money, right? Sell it in a way that, you know, I know having an injury is going to fuck someone up. Mm -hmm. So I can then put a, a, a program out that says, I'm going to sell you on, you're not going to get the injury, you're going to minimize the risk of injury, all right? I'm going to sell that to you, provide a program, fantastic, cool. You're doing a, 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 a prevention based program, risk mitigation program, whatever you want to call it, right? But using it for a commercial gain, all right? The biggest, or some of the biggest motivating factors for people, fear. Yes. Right? And so if I can speak about things in a way that keeps them fearful, and they will pay me to allay that fear, then I'm gonna propagate that fear. 
subconsciously. I'm not gonna tell people you need to be fearful of this, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hype it up so much. So you need to be aware of this so much. It can happen to all these people, all these stats happening. The, I saw on the, um, the lecture before, like the risk of injury has doubled in the last nine years. You know, da -da 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 -da, right? There's a, there's a certain approach that comes to that. Rather than saying, yeah, injuries happen. And they're happening at a faster rate than they ever have before because the game is getting faster. Right? It's a very different approach to sell it. Yeah. You know, and so it is on it, it is on, on coaches, S and C coaches and performance coaches and trainers and whatever to help mitigate that risk. But it's also in the language that we use. Yeah. And it's also in the questions that athletes ask of those in their circles, right? And you know, questioning why people think a certain way. And then and then going from there into okay, well, um, is that the actual fact or is that an opinion? You know, if if you're an athlete and I say you just had an injury, you know, or if something's happened to you, you're out for a week or two, right? And then someone says, you, oh, you know, that's so bad. Like, I feel so sorry for you. You know, didn't do this and that, whatever. And you know, you'll be okay or whatever. And you say, why do you think that way? Hmm. You know, why are you putting that on me? Like, I feel okay. You know, I just know that I've got to go with my outcomes. I've got to go with my training. You got to do this and that. I'm outcome driven, rather than going, oh my god, yes, I actually feel that way. You know, feel sad, feel what, feel emotional. Have a feeling around the injury, of course. You know, feel that, but act on the actual actuality of it. Yeah. You still can you still work? Yes. All right. Most of the time, hopefully. You know, do you still have your friends? Yes. Do you still have your loved ones around you? Yes. Okay. Cool. Now let's look at how we can integrate your um, rehab plan or return to sport plan within your lifestyle, um, and ask those questions. Why do you think that's so bad for me? How do you feel about my injury? You know, why do you um, feed into this fear? You know, rather than being like, it's happened, now, four days later, you know, player feels like you can go for a bit of a job. Go for a job. I'm not going to tell you to stop. Yeah, yeah. Go, you, are you in pain? Nope. Go no, for a job. No one knows their bodies like them. Correct. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, ask that question and do what you can do. You know, test yourself. You know, you've, you've had an injury. You know, I did uh, pull my hamstring, right? And I was like, cool. Can I get a lift? How far can I do a two meter box drop. It's a two meter box drop. Right, that's not hamstring at all. <laughs> all right, so you know, I'm still testing myself within within limits. You know, this is for me personally, right? Yeah. So don't do two meter box. Don't do what Josh does. Do what Josh tells you to do. <laughs> um, you know, so but it's about going. You know, actually seeing. Here's a quote for you. Actually seeing the light through the fog. The fog being the wispy opinions. Should we bring of people. my gaming fog analogy back in. <laughs> the um you know seeing the light through the fog the fog being the opinions of other people yeah. that that isn't solid your focus is trying to if you want to get back to sport get back to sport if you want to use it as a as an out well, i've done this i don't want to go back anymore that's cool right whatever your focus is you know but the wispy opinions of those around you unless they're of um some sort of unless you value them to the highest degree don't take any note of them Ask them, ask them why, empathize with their opinion. Why do you feel that way? Thank you for your support. I appreciate having you around. Can you help push me in a positive direction? Because it's you probably know. the ones that have that big freak out are the ones that don't know what's going on. Correct. Don't know the anatomy of an injury. Correct. Don't know the mechanics of the limits that it's affected by. Mm -hmm. uh, and they go, oh my God, it's just an injury. That's, yeah. It's just, there's no, it's no gray, it's just black and white. Yeah. Injured, not injured. Yeah. Whereas we understand the gray, where okay, you're injured, yes, but there's a lot more nuance we, around yeah, it. Yeah, we can do something about this injury, yeah. um, including getting it back a lot earlier than you think. Yeah. And it's not as big a deal as you think. Cool. That's the key. On like very what? That's the key. It's not a bigger deal as you think. Yeah. And the reason you think it is is because of what's been put around you. Yeah. You know, so understand what's happening around you, to then understand what's happening within you, to then understand how you can then um, ensure you're at your best moving forward. I feel like we did really well with that. That one. was brilliant. Even if I do say so myself. You know what? I'm gonna um, second your opinion. I also think that was brilliant. <laughs> um, we do hope you guys got a lot from that one. Uh, those are listening, guys and girls. I, 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 we we'll talked about this in another episode. I've been thinking about more um, how we refer to people in groups lately. So I was talking to my ladies' group. Yes. And yes. I, I said to them. Uh, this is I do this with any female group I have. Uh -huh. I say, look, when I talk to you, I'm going to typically call you ladies, girls, something like that. 
Mm. Is that okay with you? Mm. Ask the permission first. Mm. Like a typical just calling girls. Mm. No, that's fine. Or well, some might say, I prefer not to be called a girl. Like, mm. cool, I'll respect whatever you ask, whatever you say. Uh, these ladies said, yep, we don't care. Just don't call us guys. Yeah. Yep. Like, you know what? Absolutely. Definitely, I won't do that. Fantastic. And that's awareness. Yes. And that's through this show that I've become so aware of that. Damn. Um, but yeah, that's definitely, I think it's as easy as asking what are you most comfortable with? That's this is a whole other topic. No, we're gonna, <laughs> this is like a preview to the next one. <laughs> okay. Asking what do you feel comfortable with me calling you, me associating with you? How, do, how can I make you feel more comfortable? Beautiful. And then going with that. And that is the end of this show and the start of the next one. We will see you soon, fam. Oh, quick, 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 quick. Oh, shit, take it back. Go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Put this on the ground. You can't see it on the video. Uh, we've got matching tops. We have uniforms. And on that note, we've got matching tops. Bye. <laughs>